what are your spiritual practices? I've been asked this question many times, and sometimes I feel my anxiety rise and I begin to rack my brain for anything that looks like the daily office, deep and long prayer, centering prayer, Lectio Divina, or some kind of meditation. I often end up drawing a blank, a sense of guilt, embarrassment, and maybe some shame can come creeping in. Maybe I think I'm too busy right now, or the thought that adding a practice that I don't feel like is working adds more stress to life, and it becomes a box to check in my daily life. But here's the thing. Spiritual practices can look like Le Lectio Divina and the daily office and centering prayer. And they do not have to look like anything in particular. They don't work or not work. And they are not helpful if they become another obligation that we feel like we should be doing. So what is spiritual practice? First, it is practice. There's no way to be perfect at spiritual practice because there's no wrong way to do it. At its very heart, spiritual practice is being present in the moment and knowing, no experiencing, that we and the whole world are beloved beyond our comprehension and are surrounded and filled with the presence and love of our creator. With intentionality and maybe some creativity, things that you do every day and things that bring you great joy can become life-giving spiritual practice. Remembering that there is no right and no wrong. Let's do a spiritual practice together. We are going to use an example of a normal everyday activity, getting dressed. Yes, it can be used for changing from one pair of pajamas to another. For now, simply imagine you're doing the motions. This meditation is simply an example. It is not a template or a set of rules. If you get dressed in 37 seconds, that is 37 seconds that can also be used as a time to say something like, your love is everywhere, God. So get creative. All right, here we go. Imagine it's morning and time to get going for the day. As you pull out your clothes, acknowledge all the effort needed to get those garments into your closet. Sense God's love surrounding all the people it took for that to happen. If you can't decide what to wear, imagine God's love surrounding those who don't have extra clothes to choose from. Maybe the verse from Colossians 3 comes to mind. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, and you ponder it as you dress. As you put each garment on, imagine it is woven with the tangible love of God. Feel the love against your skin and seeping into your body. Maybe you wiggle your toes as you pull your socks on and appreciate the wonder of the creation that is you and the miles those toes have supported you on. When you put your shoes on, imagine God's love surrounding those who do not have shoes to put on. As you stand and straighten your shirt, feel God's love holding you, not because of what you have done, but because of who you are, a unique and beloved creation. 
feel God's love holding you, not because of what you have done, but because of who you are, a unique and beloved creation.